By viewer request, I will use the Aqua Parasol from Dragon Quest Monsters 2 as a Pokemon in Fire Red. The Aqua Parasol, or Aquarella, is a Nidarian monster that resembles an umbrella, and as far as I know, it was only featured in DQM2 and its 3DS remake. Stats-wise, it has good HP and great attack in the original game, but the rest of its stats are mediocre to bad. Considering that it's a monster you can get very early on, and that it levels up quickly, it's actually pretty decent. Converted into Pokemon base stats, it will have 110 HP, 119 attack, 70 defense, 52 special attack, 64 special defense, and 60 speed, for a total of 475. The table 6 it uses for agility grows quickly before level 17, and it gets the early bird trait in the remake, so I've buffed its speed by a tier. Since the DQM games use a lookup table instead of a fixed formula to calculate stat growth, a higher index number doesn't necessarily mean a higher stat. Also, stats in DQM grow at variable rates throughout the levels, and this is impractical to mimic in Pokemon, so the conversion won't be exactly faithful. Its level up moves are based on its bolsterer skill set in the remake, which is a purely defensive set with no damaging skills. Fortunately, it did get Mercurial Thrust and Water Spout in the GBC original, so it won't be fully TM dependent. The Selflessness skill, which works like Follow Me, has the same Japanese name as Substitute in Pokemon, and since Follow Me is useless in single battles, I gave it Substitute instead. All standard solo run rules apply. Hidden Power is banned due to its luck-based nature in this generation. I will set up an Aqua Parasol with perfect IVs and pre-applied EVs. It will have a neutral nature, as I can edit the base stats directly to make adjustments. It's an aquatic monster in the material family, and since umbrellas have a metal shaft, water and steel types seem the most fitting. However, it will have no steel type moves, as Iron Head, Flash Cannon, and Smart Strike didn't exist until the later games. I gave it max special attack EVs due to its move pool, with the rest split between attack and special defense, favoring the latter for some extra bulk. It took less experience than most monsters to level up in the original game, so I put it into the 800,000 group. Not 600,000, because that group actually takes the most EXP in the early levels. There are no Pokemon abilities that work like the DQM version of Early Bird, which grants priority to most skills while lowering ailment resistances by two stages, so Swift Swim will have to do. The later games introduced priority boosting abilities like Prankster and Gale Wings, but they only work for specific moves. Anyway, Brock's Gym is trivial for anything that knows a water or grass move, or basically any special move that's not electric. His Pokémon have virtually no special defense. He gives the TM for Rock Tomb, which is terrible in this gen, with only 50 power and 80% accuracy. The AI in these games treats it as a speed debuff, like Scary Face, not an actual attack. I suppose it could be useful against all those bug and bird trainers on the early routes, but it's accuracy though. I might seem to have a colorful move set already, but Bullet Seed only has a base power of 10 in this game, not 25, and again, Rock Tomb is just awful. The biggest threat in the second rival battle is Sand Attack on his lead Pidgeotto. But I have a good level advantage here thanks to my EXP group, and Rock Tomb should just one-shot it, provided it can land a hit. His starter hasn't evolved, and his Abra can't even attack yet. I fought most of the trainers on the way to Bill's lab and grabbed the TM for secret power, which is amazing for this early in the game. Misty should also be pretty trivial due to my typing, and although her Starmie is clearly faster, the only realistic way I could lose is if I got confused by its water pulse. But the game actually gives you a Persim Berry outside Mount Moon for just that. I set up light screen to discourage special moves, and it seemed to work out, since her Starmie used Swift instead of Water Pulse. It was a simple two-shot with secret power anyway. Water Pulse is a straight upgrade to Water Gun. With a decent 60 power and 20 PP, it's a great move early on, but it comes way too late in Ruby and Sapphire, where you'd already have Surf. The rival fight on the ship is a complete joke, so I'll just speed through it. His team is just too underleveled to pose any challenge. 
Meowth is the Pokemon for pickup in these games, and it's the only way to farm berries before the post-game, because you can't grow them. It's also the only way to get the TM for hidden power, but that's not why I banned it for being luck-based. Rather, its type and power in these old games are random based on your IVs, which you have almost zero control over until Gen 5 or 6. So basically, you only have a 1 in 16 chance of getting the type you want, and its power can be anywhere between 30 and 70. Anything below 60 is useless for coverage, since you'll likely do more with a neutral stab move. Surge is the worst gym leader in these remakes. He opens with two severely underleveled Pokemon, and his Raichu is only level 24 instead of 28 like in the yellow version. But even level 28 is too low when you can catch a level 31 Dugtrio in the cave next door. What's more ironic is that if you encounter a Dugtrio, you're almost forced to catch it thanks to its 120 speed and arena trap ability. Anyway, Surge gives the TM for Shockwave in the remakes, not Thunderbolt. It's just an Electric-type Swift clone, although it sounds like a ground-type move. You'll naturally be overleveled for the tower fight, because of all the unskippable trainers on the way, especially in the rock tunnel. So again, I'll just speed through it, since there's nothing to talk about in this fight. By the way, Magic Coat is a move introduced in this gen that you've probably never seen. Literally all it does is bounce back an ailment or a debuff on the turn it's used. It doesn't stop buffs or even curse, and it has no duration like Taunt. It's such a pointless move that a permanent version of it became an ability in the later games, called Magic Bounce. The first fight against Giovanni is usually easy. His Onyx and Rhyhorn have terrible typing and no special defense, and while his Kangaskhan has a lot of HP, it's a normal type and has no good moves. I fought some optional trainers in Erika's gym for the experience. Erika herself shouldn't be any problem when I have such a big level advantage, although I only have secret power to hit her grass types with. I don't have another Cherry Berry for Stun Spore, which all of her Pokemon have, but I'm going first, so I can just set up a substitute to block ailments. And here I found a huge flaw with the AI in this game, namely its unawareness of the substitute. Instead of attacking to destroy it ASAP, it would still try to inflict ailments and debuffs. I'm not sure if this happens in Ruby and Sapphire as well, or if it's just a bug or oversight in these Gen 1 remakes. This AI quirk basically gave me a free win, although there wasn't much her Pokemon can do against my substitute anyway, especially since you can't leech HP from it. She gives the TM for Giga Drain, and even though I made it compatible, it's just not a good move in this gen, with only 60 power and 5 PP, not 75 and 10. Koga's gym presents a huge level bump, but those bikers on the cycling road use a lot of evolved Pokemon that can give over a thousand EXP apiece. Also, I'm a steel type and can't be poisoned, so there's literally nothing he can do against my substitute. The steel type didn't exist in the original Gen 1 games, and the only steel Pokemon you can get in the remakes is Magnemite, which is only accessible after you beat Koga. So, they didn't give him moves like Flamethrower to counter steel types. He gives the Toxic TM, but I don't think I'll need it since Toxic Stalling takes too long, and every trainer in the Pokemon League has at least two full restores. Route 15 is the location for the Rain Dance TM. I have the Swift Swim ability, so I'll grab it just in case I'll need the boost to my speed and water type moves. The rival battle at Sylph Company won't be an issue as long as I get to move before his Pidgeot, which I should, as his team doesn't seem to have any EVs yet. I am faster, and my substitute will block any of his attempts at Sand Attack or Feather Dance, and he has nothing that can break it in one hit. I was surprised to find that Aqua Jet didn't exist in this gen, although I vaguely remember seeing it on a wild Sharpedo or something. It would have been the perfect move for the Aqua Parasol to mimic its early bird trait, but I guess extreme speed will have to suffice. But in hindsight, I wouldn't have had a slot for it anyway, since it's only 40 power, and I certainly wouldn't want two water moves. I need substitute, and I need recover, and my special attack is too low for it to be my only stab move. Yes, it would have been special in this gen, like all water moves. Giovanni doesn't have a single ground type move on his entire team in the second fight, which makes no sense if you ask me. 
My stab surf should just one shot his needle queen anyway, and there's nothing his Kangas Khan can do while I have a substitute up. Again, these games just aren't balanced around steel and dark types, considering you aren't supposed to have any except the mag- There's almost nothing that can hit the former, and nothing that resists the latter. It's the same story with Sabrina's gym. Moves like Focus Blast don't exist in this gen, and her Kadabra and Alakazam don't even have coverage moves like Fire and Thunder Punch. This means I can just hide behind a substitute and sweep her team. She gives the TM for Calm Mind, but I didn't make it compatible, as Nidarians aren't known for their intelligence. Blaine's Fire Gym should be a piece of cake for a water type, although I really don't know what I was doing there. My Surf could've just one-shot everything on his team, except maybe the Arcanine, which could be a range, but I used Substitute and Extreme Speed instead. I guess I was just tired, and my brain shut off. I obviously can't learn Fire Blast, so the TM is useless to me. Giovanni's gym is another easy win. All of his Pokemon are weak to water, and Surf will easily one-shot them at level 63. The Sevii Island side quest and the trainers in his gym give a lot of experience. His Doug Trio is faster, but it's only level 42, with abysmal HP and defense, so extreme speed will take care of it. I don't get stab on it, but my attack stat is actually great even without much EV investment. Earthquake is another TM that I can't use, as it simply makes no sense on an aquatic creature. The rival battle before the league is just like the previous one, that is, it won't be a problem as long as I go before his Pidgeot. I should still be able to do to my level advantage and the 10% badge bonus, and I don't think his team has any EVs in this fight either. I did go first again, so it's quite obvious that it doesn't have EVs, or if it does, they are not in speed. Probably HP and defense, seeing as it uses Feather Dance and Sand Attack. I suppose it's a good thing that Roost isn't available in this gen, or it could be incredibly annoying to deal with if you don't have Taunt. His Growlithe and Rhyhorn were obviously one-shots with Surf. I don't think the critical on his execute mattered, since substitute blocks leech seed, and his Ulakazam was a one-shot with extreme speed. I gave the Aqua Parasol Water Spout at level 65 just for flavor, because it did start with Water Spout in its original game. It's the tier 1 water skill that actually did ice and cold breath damage, since water didn't become its own element until Joker 3. Before fighting the league, I need to grab the Ice Beam TM, and thankfully, they tell you what the TMs contain in this game. I also need to get rid of Surf, as I already have the stronger Water Spout, and I don't want to be stuck with a water move in the league. Lastly, I'll learn Double Edge to replace Extreme Speed, for the extra power and PP. I have a lot of HP and attack, and I can heal myself. Here are my stats and moves going into the league. My attack is great, but my special attack is barely passable with max EVs, and my defense and speed are only mediocre. I really hope my decision to not invest EVs into speed doesn't bite me this time, like it did in my protokiller run. I doubly resist ice, so pretty much the only way I can lose against Lorelei is by getting frozen and never thawing. I'll equip an Azpair Berry just in case, although I don't even think she's going to pick ice moves at all when her Pokemon have another stab move. Her lead Dugong likes to set up hail on its first turn for some chip damage against non-ice types. Fortunately, I can heal myself with Recover, which still has 20 PP in this generation. I believe its PP has been reduced to 10, and then 5, in the newer games, in the attempt to thwart stalling tactics. Some of those can be quite unsportsmanlike, as they don't aim to win, but to waste time and cause frustration to the opponent.
I can only hit Lorelei's team with double edge, which has 25% recoil damage, but my HP is high enough to soak it up comfortably, and I can always heal myself afterwards. You can equip the Shell Bell to effectively reduce its recoil to only an eighth, but I don't think it's obtainable before the League, or at all in this game. Also, like the Paladin's Sacrifice skill in Diablo 2, the recoil damage is dealt before the Life Steal. This means you could KO yourself before receiving the heal, if you double-edged something like a Blissey while on low HP. Any water move takes care of Bruno's two Onyx, and while his Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee have base 110 special defense, their HP is just terrible at only 50. I didn't one-shot his Machamp, and I could easily have lost if its Citrus Berry didn't bring it out of potion range, since Water Spout does less damage for every HP the user has lost. I won't need Water Spout anymore, so I replaced it with Psychic for Agatha. I made the TM compatible because many aquatic and amorphous Pokemon like Gorbis and Jellicent can learn Psychic, which was originally known as Psychokinesis. I'm slower than her ganger, but since I'm immune to Toxic and Sludge Bomb, it can only damage me with Shadow Ball or Shadow Punch. Ghost is still physical and resisted by Steel in this gen, so it will take at least two hits to break my substitute. Most of her Pokemon are very fragile, and my non-stab Psychic one-shot her two gangers, Haunter, and Golbat. It didn't one-shot her Arbok, which suggests it most likely has HP or Special Defense EVs, but it couldn't do anything back as it doesn't have Earthquake. And again, the AI messed up and tried to use Screech against my substitute. I replaced Psychic with Ice Beam for Lance's Dragon types. Lance could be a problem if his lead Gyarados didn't have such a horrendous move set, because I can't avoid its Intimidate and have no way to buff my attack stats. If it had Dragon Dance and Earthquake, it could easily overwhelm me, especially since he has two full restores as well. But oh well, the game gave it rubbish moves like Bite and Dragon Rage, and my double edge just happened to land a critical hit, bypassing my attack drop from Intimidate. His Dragonairs and Dragonite were obviously one-shots with Ice Beam. His Aerodactyl survived, possibly due to the boost from its ancient power, but it also has a trash move set without Earthquake or even Fire Blast. The developers seem to have forgotten that Magneton is now part Steel, which is the only type that resists Dragon until Gen 6. The champion battle will require some luck. His Pidgeot will definitely be faster now, and it will likely open with either Sand Attack or Feather Dance. Feather Dance won't be the end of the world, but I really, really don't want an accuracy drop. It used Feather Dance, which was the less bad of the two debuffs. I set up a substitute to prevent further debuffs, and the AI was once again unaware of its effects and tried to use Sand Attack on it. My Ice Beam wasn't a one-shot, but it did burn one of his full restores. The freeze didn't matter, since it would probably just waste its turn spamming debuffs anyway. Rhydon was fortunately a one-shot. Its special defense is absolutely awful. Not sure if the crit on the executor mattered, since it also has awful special defense. I still had my substitute up when he sent out his Arcanine, so I avoided its Intimidate. My double edge still did about a third with my attack halved, and its flamethrower didn't do that much. I could easily attack and then heal up as needed. Focus Blast is not in this game, so I had nothing to worry about on his Alakazam. Reflect was annoying, but I could just stall it out with Substitute and Recover. I got another crit with Ice Beam, but I really didn't expect it to one-shot his Alakazam. It could be a range with a crit, but it doesn't have a lot of HP either, and its special defense was only buffed in Gen 6. His Blastoise can tank everything I have quite well, but it can't do any meaningful damage to me outside of a critical Hydro Pump in the rain. Even that wouldn't be able to do too much, and Hydro Pump only has 5 PP, which I can easily stall out with Substitute and Recover. It's never going to use Ice Beam or Blizzard because I doubly resist Ice, so once it runs out of Hydro Pump, it'll just use Bite. So, in conclusion, this weird Jellyfish Umbrella thing was a lot more impressive than I thought it would be.
It looked like one of those early game filler monsters that you'd probably never bother to put on your team, but I guess its stats are actually quite okay, especially considering it levels up quickly. That said, it could be a lot worse as a Pokemon if I didn't give it the steel typing. These Gen 1 remakes are really not balanced around steel and dark types, because nothing has Earthquake, Fire Blast, or Brick Break as coverage moves. Magneton with an ice type hidden power can just sweep the entire game. Anyway, that's it for this run. Thanks for watching.